again at another blog. Today is, uh, I think, the 20th. It's the 25th of. Um, it's, the tw- it's the 25th of June. Uh, our Lord year uh, 2020, and we're here in Titusville. Uh, uh, we're here in Titusville, and behind me, if you can look and see the great historical uh, K. Kennedy Florida VAV building. Uh, my father and mother once worked there. Uh, I elaborated that on the last blog, and yeah, for, for all my friends that know I'm a poet, and for all that don't know, you know, for the ones that don't know, I'm a poet. I've been a poet all my life. I said my poetry began when my mother was having I was in my mother. And I was in, I was in my mother. She was pregnant. And she said all she did all day was read poetry. And come to find out that some of my favorite poets were the books she read. And I'll lie big on that on that least later. Years ago, uh, we had a tragedy here. We had two tragedies. But one tragedy, the first one was in flight. And it's the second tragedy, but it was in flight. That's the explosion of the challenge. You know, when it when it blew up. I'll elaborate by that later. Right now I'm gonna read a poem that I dedicated to one of the members of that flight. His name was Ron E. McNeil. The reason I chose him because we are uh, Living in Copa, we knew him. So he was a, a, a resident visit, visitor to the schools and to the community of things. And so that when uh, after the action happened, we named a school that was a prominently black school was named after a teacher after him. Called it was Poinsettia. Uh, it was Poinsett Elementary School, but we changed it in honor of him and his uh, contribute to our community when he was here. So he wasn't born here, but he worked here out in Rivard County, but he made Coco his second home. And we named the uh, renamed Poinsett of Coco to Ronnie McNeil uh, Middle School. So let me read the poem you uh, saw in the beginning. I wrote for him after that tragic accident. It was called a challenge. Always in life. There's a predestined flight. Things that are wrong, things that are right. Things that are dark, things that are light. Things that you do, things that you do not. In the opinion of society, convincing you to stop. So is the preset road of life. To go against it just wouldn't be right. The challenge remains until confronted by the challenger. That person or persons who demand in their life control and order, not to go beyond, but to expand their borders. I have waited for that person of our race to step out and join the heroes of space. One of them persons was Ronnie McNeil, second member of our race to first explore the boundaries of space. He saw what a few have seen, the unfolding of a dream, the sunrise from the window of a spaceship, one of life's most breathtaking gift, a beyond imaginary view, only observed by a few. Cape Kennedy, Florida, USA, the airport to the stars, most would say, on their chariots of wing and fire, they soared through the heavens higher and higher, and men like Manir was a part of that race to first explore the frontiers of space. The roar of a rocket and a blast of thunder and a fireball from out of a hell's dream, one of the most horrible accidents mankind had ever seen. The truth may be too real to understand. Was it an act of God or an ignorance of man? If Ron and his comrades could, they would say, carry on NASA, there'll be better days. It's motivation I would give for the challenge of McNeil. For by his achievements of his life, he carved the dark with way of the light and made it plain to see that we not only can want, we can be. 
So the challenge of life is left up to you and me. Wherever American, American can concede, they can, can achieve. As for NASA's future, will she stand or fall? To pick up what they left off would be the greatest challenge of all. I wrote that in honor of Dr. McNeil. You know, because it was a personal thing. The others we, we knew about, but we didn't know the person. It was a personal thing. Because he took time to visit our, our small community uh, south of here called Coco, south of Titusville, called Coco. And when when it when it when the accident occurred, I was working on the cable with a cable company and we was laying pipe right out there where the um, the shop was fired. And we didn't notice it go up because to us that's routine. You know, shuttle flights, rocket flights, all kind of stuff is routine. Most of that is for the tourists and people that got time to enter. We were working that day and I heard a loud explosion and we all looked up. My boss said, what happened? And I said, sir, the, I think the shuttle blew up. He said, no, no, it didn't. And so he ran to his radio and it was all over the news. And the radio, the um, work radio, that they, they think there was an explosion. Oh, no, no, no. I believe the shell of Challenger exploded. And the first thing we thought about was the civilian on board, the school teacher. That's, that's the first thing we thought about was, was the school teacher. And I don't know, babe, what's, what congressman that was on that flight and there was counsel, I think it was McCain. Some other congressman was scheduled to fly, but he was he was bumped, or he wasn't bumped, he gave the seat up to um, uh, Shirley McCall, McCall, the um... Crystal McCall. Crystal McCall, I said Shirley McCall, ain't no Shirley McCall, it's Crystal McCall. They even named the school after her down in Palm Bay. My youngest son attended there, uh, Hilton. But we thought of Crystal, you know, and she was out here riding the bike over, over the Cape because she was a little nervous. So she was out on the bicycle riding. You know, the common nerves all over the Cape. It was a beautiful thing. And that's what we thought of her. And she had planned to do a lesson from class that would never be in. And that was the first, the first event. And why this tragedy happened, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just life. And that's what we, we, we thought of. And, we, you know, we was hoping there was some survivor.